back to my channel, Rapture Dreams, where we are watching and waiting for the return of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are all about Bible studies and end time signs videos from around the world in real time. And I did have a comment that I'd like to, down in the comments, that I'd like to address now about Rapture Dreams. Uh, and not to put stock into dreams and these things. So I just wanted to say that uh, I only share dreams about every six months, but the Lord told us that in the last days, Holy Spirit would be poured out onto all flesh. All, meaning men and women, children. So he says this in Acts chapter two, verse 17. And I wanted to, to say something about the dreams. Um, it says, it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And like I say, I don't put too much stock into dreams, even though the channel name is Rapture Dreams. Um, but a hundred million Muslims just gave their life to Jesus over dreams. They had to shut down 50,000 mosques. And I just made a video on this. So you guys should go check that out. So the increase in dreams tells me that it is the end times. We are in the last days. This is an end time sign, says the Lord. Um, we know that you have to have a spirit of discernment, that not everything that comes to us comes from the Lord, um, that when we're asleep, it is when we are most um, susceptible to attacks. So just to use our discernment um, in everything that we do, we speak, we say, uh, make sure that it's coming from the word of God, the word of truth. So um, it goes on to say in verse 18, even on my men servants and my men maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. So a lot of the times in these other cultures, um, if you grew up and your whole family is, for example, Islam, sometimes the only way that God can reach his children is through a dream. And he says that these things shall be added to you, so it would not be in vain if you left home or family to join Jesus Christ. All these things will be added to you. Uh, families are much bigger in heaven. So there was this little girl who painted Jesus when she was just eight years old and painted him from memory, from her dreams. You see, her parents were atheists. I'd like to take a look at this painting uh, now, real quick, we're going to throw it up there for you. As uh, I'm very, very interested in this painting, thousands of people who have had near-death experiences say that this is what he looks like. That's amazing to me, um, having an eight-year-old paint this intricately and uh, everyone saying, yes, that's him, that's Jesus. So wouldn't it be awesome if... Uh, if that really were what he, he looked like, at least the way that she had him in his dreams, in her dreams, reveal himself to her. Um, this is amazing. I believe in miracles, which is what today's Bible study is actually about. I'm praying to the Lord myself for my own miracles. My prayer has always been for both of my sons to be healed. You might could even hear Luke in the background there clapping. Last year, about this time, we took them for revival. I was so hopeful to God that by rebuking uh, their diagnosis of autism and global developmental delays, and by rebuking any witchcraft that may have touched the family, you know, breaking generational curses and all that. So uh, we did go up north uh, for a children's deliverance service, and it was very good. There was a lot of worship. The worship team was great. The prayer team was great. 
Um, we were hanging back, I guess. Um, there were so many people there and everybody was towards the front um, trying to get this one woman to pray for them. Uh, she was on fire. You know, saying these these kids need the Holy Spirit. They don't need to be babied. We need to give them fire, the Holy Ghost. And you know, it was just uh, it was such an experience. Um, but we felt like we were we were in the back. We were tucked behind because our kids weren't like the rest of the kids. Some of these kids were teenagers. They were there to be delivered um, from all sorts of things. Um, so you know. We, we made our way down the front towards the end of the service, and the woman that I had approached, I had asked her to pray with us. And I think I may have put her on the spot a little because I said, you know, I, I believe that if you pray over my family, that they will receive healing, you know, today, like all the way free, like, come on, let's do this. Let's, let's get some healing here and just have them just be all the way, uh, Free from this so um, she said hold on let me go get somebody to help and I'm not saying she wasn't in full faith or that I wasn't in full faith or that we didn't rebuke enough things or whatever it happened because uh, we did receive we did receive after leaving there um, and I'll tell you later um, we did started to notice some differences in our children but I noticed something in the healings of Jesus when the disciples couldn't heal this little boy who had signs of autism and epilepsy. The Bible doesn't say what he had, but he was afflicted since birth and he, um, you know, had a mute, deaf, dumb spirit, uh, epileptic, uh, was writhing on the floor, just whatever he was doing. He'd had this affliction since he was born. It said he was born with it. And the disciples came to Jesus and asked him why they could not heal him. And a lot of people may have heard this before, but this is where it comes from. Jesus, he says, O ye of little faith, this kind does not go out, but by prayer and fasting. Which, by the way, that scripture is actually missing from our physical Bibles. It skips over from like verse 7 to verse 9. It skips over 8 to tell yourself how you can heal yourself by prayer and fasting. That's what Jesus Christ said, by prayer and fasting that this kind goes out. And they've taken that from us, whoever um, printed these Bibles, it skips over verses in some of these versions. So this kind, O ye of little faith, this kind does not go out but by prayer and fasting. So it's hard to heal a lifelong condition and I said, I'm not going to say if God wanted them healed that they would be, which is true, but I wouldn't, um, I wanted to pray with full faith as if they had, it had already been done for us. And I've fasted and I've prayed. Well, when we left the revival, my youngest son, Luke, stopped having nightmares. He was uh, a sleep disorder case where I just felt like he had nightmares all the time. So that's a blessing in itself just to get that peaceful sleep because honestly, I wasn't getting sleep either and some nights I still don't. Um, but at least he's happy. He'll sit there and he'll uh, play on his tablet device or the kids, uh, you know, Kindle and just be laughing in the other room and I might be able to lay down a little bit. So that's good. And Gabriel is communicating and singing and following directions but they weren't healed because I was like all the way free Lord all the way free because they still um, hit themselves they hit their heads and hit other people and I just wanted them to be free from this well I was reading something that I had read before in the past, but it didn't really register then until today because now I have special needs children. So I'm going to go to it in John chapter 9, verses 1 through 12. And a man who was born blind 
receives his sight. You might can hear him giggling right now. He can't regulate his emotions. He's just, he's extremely happy one second and then crying the next. And we are just trying to unbind his tongue in the name of Jesus right now. So he will speak real words and stop with the, uh, the motioning. Come here, come here. He motions us to do what he wants us to do or he makes sound. So a man born blind receives sight. John chapter 9 verses 1 through 12. Now Jesus, uh, now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? So they're asking him, you know, where, where was the fault? Who, who sinned along the way that this person was born blind? Surely you couldn't uh, have no sin be born blind. The baby is sinless. So was it his fault or the fault of his parents? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. So in other words, to display the glory of God so that God may be glorified. That's why he was born blind. I must work the works of works in him who sent me while it is, a day, it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus, the red words. And I just bought this new Bible. It looks exactly like my uncle's, the ones that I have been reading out of before. So, um, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with his saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. There's this beautiful song out right now that's just like, used to spit in mud and open blind eyes. So he's got wonder work and power. Demons cower when they hear his name called. And he said, go to him, go wash him in the pool of Salaam, which is translated. So he went and washed and came back seeing. So the neighbors all said, "What is this not the same man who was blind, who sat and begged? This is he, you know? How was your eyes opened? A man called Jesus, you know, spit in the dirt and opened my blind eyes. Go wash them in the pool, he said. And I went and washed and received sight. Then then they said, where is he? And they, he said, I don't know. So he, <laughs> he went on about his way after healing the blind man. I just, I love Jesus's personality. So this is when I realized today, it wasn't that my past sin had caused this. You know, I'm divorced. I had, it's been 12 years since my divorce and Gabriel was seven and Luke is five. But you as a parent with special needs child, it's, it, it's hard but it just makes you pray harder. And now everyone around us sees us praise and worship God, even in the storm. Some weeks it seems like the storm never stops, but our whole families were praying when we left for the children's deliverance service. It took us uh, a labor of love. It took us like seven, eight hours to get there. And we, uh, my husband says, who knows, maybe you wouldn't have read so much or started the channel. You know, everything for a reason. And you know, I started paying attention to a lot of things like the ingredients in our food and what is in these vaccines. It caused us to get healthy and expel the sewage that they are, you know, trying to pump into us, this poisonous food to keep us slow and lazy, malnourished, and weak and sick, and our brains too. So I thought it was important to share this word today. So if there is anything that you are still hopeful to God for, don't give up. It is on my heart, don't you ever give up. I'd like to pray. Lord, you keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you. We appreciate you, Lord. We know it is all for your glory, your purpose. We will never give up on our children. And one day I will hear my son's true voice. 
and all the thoughts he ever had. You know, I've asked God, I pray for him, show me God, when I get to heaven, everything he ever wanted to tell me, but couldn't. Heal whoever's watching God. We all have a miracle in mind. We are faithful to God for you see it through. We love you and your son Jesus, and we are eagerly and patiently awaiting his return. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back one day very, very soon. So if you would all just subscribe and like this page so we can continue to share the good news that he's coming. You guys have a good night.